Oh, where was I? So we have so much girl power right now. It is incredible. So I just want to say thank you so much, Piper. Thank you so much, Lawrence. I don't even know what to say that you're able to, you know, dedicate your time to helping us. We want to know about the Hunter essay. Please tell us about the Hunter essay. And we want to understand what this essay is about and what we're getting ourselves into. With regards to the Hunter exam and qualifying, um, they're going to make a final announcement, but apparently they're discussing you looking at fourth grade scores. So that's likely. Um, there is a qualifying test that's administered for some students, but that's not what I've heard. The last I heard was the fourth grade scores will be um, of consideration. So keep that in mind. With that being said, Let's go. I want it. We want to hear what should we learn about this essay? And can you quickly just tell us before we start really fast just about each of yourselves so that we just know about you as you're leading us? Okay, so I'm Lawrence. Um, as Francis said, I went to Hunter, graduated in 2017. Um, right now, I'm going to be a senior at the Macaulay Honors Program at Hunter. I'm double majoring in clinical psychology and sociology, and I also have a minor in religion. Um, after college, I plan on going to grad school, um, getting a PsyD, and then being a practicing therapist. Um, I'm Piper. I went to Hunter from PK, pre-K to eighth grade. Um, and then for 9th through 12th, I went to Interlochen Arts Academy, where I was a voice major. Um, I go, currently go to the George Washington University. I'm going to graduate in the fall. Um, I have a double major in entrepreneurship and innovation and marketing with a minor in music. Um, after college, I plan to go to business school um, and hopefully do something in the in, in music business. That, so that's the plan for me. Okay. So about the Hunter essay. So about the Hunter test in general, actually. So if you don't know, the Hunter test consists of a multiple choice section and then an essay section. And the multiple choice section has an ELA section, which is like 50 multiple choice questions, and then a math section, which is about 30 multiple choice questions. Um, and then you have the essay at the end. So here at Queller, we say that you should usually take about an hour um, to do the essay. So what we're going to talk about here today is the essay structure, because it's super important that you understand how you should structure your essay, because once you get that down packed, you can start, you know, working on language and content and all those things. So Piper is going to start talking about that. And then if we have time at the end, I'm going to go through a little like outline. Maybe we can start actually writing some of the essay and then <coughs> critiquing it with each other. Okay, so as Lauren said, I'm going to go through the structure, um, and then um, I'm going to give some tips. Um, so first, let's scroll down to the structure here. Okay, so first, um, you want to start with your introduction. So in total, um, your essay will be about four paragraphs, but you have two pages to write, that, write it, so you really need to keep that in mind. Um, so in the introduction, you want to open with a hook. Graders, the people who grade the essays, read hundreds of essays and you want to make sure that your introduction grabs their attention. Um, so you want to open with a hook, which is about a sentence or two, and then you're going to um, talk about the topics that you're going to discuss in your body paragraphs um, without listing them. Um, so that'll be another sentence or two. Um, and then you want to roadmap. Um, so after that, you're going to go into your body paragraphs. Um, so in the beginning of each body paragraph, you obviously want to inter introduce the topic um, and then support, use details to support your first um, idea. And then you're going to want to conclude and you need to make sure that you use transitional sentences. Um, the same goes for the second body paragraph. So again, you want to introduce, you want to make a statement and support that statement, and then you want to uh, put in a concluding sentence. Um, so after your, your two to three body paragraphs, you're going to have a conclusion. And in your conclusion, you want to basically restate and summarize the what you went over in your uh, body paragraphs, but you do not want to introduce any new ideas. It should really just be a summary of the um, 
of your body paragraphs and you want to ta uh, tie up your main ideas and end with something powerful and with something um, something that like that leaves like a mark. Like I said, the writers read hundreds of essays and you want to make sure that your essay really grabs their attention. Um, so going into tips. Let's scroll down here. Wait, let's just give them a second to maybe take some notes on the structure. Okay. I don't know if they all have it printed out, but these are really, this is really important, you guys. You really want to make sure that you have the structure down packed because remember, this is a times test, right? So you can't just spend all day writing your essay. You have to think about what you want to say and make sure that you can get it out clearly, okay? That's a big thing. People have great ideas and great concepts, but it's hard for them to organize it on the spot. So then it comes out really jumbled and you're not getting across the idea that you want to get across. But if you follow this structure, it's really easy to clearly get your ideas across and then develop them with, you know, different language, vocabulary, sensory details, things like that. Okay. So let's just give everybody a minute to make sure that yeah. they have this. Take notes on um, this page. Dates. We'll give them like until the end of the next minute. Okay. Okay, so let's keep going. You want to go to the tips? Yep. Okay. Um, I, oh, I think there's another page in here with tips I want that I wanted to go oh, over. Oh, probably at the top. Yeah. One second, guys. Here we go. Okay. So the first tip um, that actually, I don't think it's on this page, but the first thing that you want to do is actually make an outline. So like, it's like Lauren said, this is a time test. And you don't have, and you only have two pages to write your, your essay. So you don't want to ramble. You want to get to the point. And in order to do, really do that, because you know, you're taking a test, you might be nervous and you might just start rambling and getting out all that you can. You want to make sure that you make an outline so you stay on topic and you know what you're talking about and you know what you're going to do. And it makes it a thousand times easier um, for you to write your essay. So um, another tip, vocabulary. So you should try to use higher level vocabulary, but only if it makes sense. If you want to use a word and you're not entirely sure if you, if you know how to use it, don't use it. Only use um, advanced vocabulary that you know makes sense in, in your essay. Um, sensory details. So you want to use adjectives and adverbs um, to describe your essay and you want to show and you don't just want to tell. Um, figurative language. Use similes, metaphors, idioms in your writing to make it jump out at the reader. Um, you, again, you really want to grab the reader's attention and you want your essay to leave a mark. Um, spatial awareness. I know it's only two pages, but you do not want to cramp all your words together. Um, and that's all, and you, someone like you might cramp all your words together to get in as much as you uh, want to say because you don't have a lot of space but that's really not the way to go something that's actually I guess could be kind of difficult is saying what you want to say with limited space um, so you just need to make sure that you don't um, cram your words together and that you're and that you're writing legibly legibly um, Another one. Um, oh, again, you want to proofread and you want to make sure that you spell everything correctly. Don't just write your essay and not proofread. Make sure that you proofread it at least once and go slowly because, you know, sometimes your, your head, like you fill in words, you fill in commas in your head and it's not actually what you wrote. So you want to make sure you pay close, atten close attention and really proofread your work. I cannot emphasize that enough. Proofread, proofread, proofread. Definitely. Um, Oh, contractions. So do not use words like can't or don't. Don't use any contractions. Um, Remember, this is a formal essay. Right. So contractions are informal. And on the note of like formal writing, you can't use like informal phrases or like mm -hmm. onomatopoeias, things like, you know, that you would use 
in just regular conversation. Right. So yeah, don't use don't use any contractions. Um, let's see. I think that's there anything else on here that you want to talk about? No, I think that's it. I think that's all the tips. Okay. All right, so Piper gave you a lot of information. We're kind of moving fast because we want to make sure that we have time for everything that we have planned. Um, but if you guys have any questions about anything that she said, you can raise your hand maybe now and we can get those out before we start um, like actually working on an essay. So does anyone have any questions, anything? If you guys want to take a screenshot or a snipping, you can do that as well. But these are like really important general tips. Okay. Yeah. And, and if you by the way, go my back dog is the other one. Well. Yeah. If you want us to go back to the other one so you can screenshot that too, just let us know. Yeah. Um, and we can do that before we start then like our little activity. I can't see the chat. Can you go back to the other side? Okay. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Right here. I can't see the, oh, here's the chat. Okay. Wait, does everyone have this, these in your notes or like screenshot or something? Because I'm going to go back to the other page that has the tips on it. Well, let's okay. Hold on, some people, some yeah. people don't. We're going to give another minute for you guys to take some more notes on this before we go back. Yeah. Has everyone either screenshotted or taken all the notes that they need to take so we can go back to the to the other um, slides. You can take some more notes on that. Oh. <laughs> Not all of them. Okay, just okay. give them another. Yeah, we'll we'll leave this up for another minute because yeah. some people still need to take notes on this. So for the people who have taken notes, I'm just gonna let you know what we're going to do for the rest of the time. Um, so we're going to try and write an outline and then maybe if we have time also get to an intro. So we have an essay topic from an actual real released hunter exam. So you can see the types of questions that they would ask you. Um, and then, you know, we'll share, critique each other, you know, talk about what we like, talk about maybe what we would do differently, things like that. Um, at Queller, usually we grade all of the essays, like homework essays and test essays. So you'd actually see on every essay that you do what you need to work on. Um, but right now, unfortunately, we can't do that because <laughs> we're on a, a webinar. Yeah, but in class, we actually do that. So I think that's really helpful. All right, so we're going to go to the to the tips uh, page. Yeah, so that you guys can take some notes on these before we start writing. Yeah. Also, I think we should show them the rubric before we start writing so they can take notes on that too. No, that's fine. Right. Yeah, we're also going to, in addition to this, we're going to show you the rubric. Um, before you start writing, so you can take some quick notes on that as well and keep that in mind um, while you're writing um, your, your essays. This is a lot on it. Yeah, so let's give you guys a minute to take notes on this. Yeah. Um, if it's easier, I think you guys can also just screenshot this, this page so you don't have to write it all down. Yeah, I don't know if they can see it. We'll move that out of the way. Oh, we're doing good on time. Yeah. 
So, Lauren, so, someone has a question right now. So let me see who's here. Um, Susan, did you want to ask a question? Iris? Anyone? Maybe? No? Susan? You can, you can also type into the chat box. Iris, did you have a question? Will these and you can go ahead. Will these pages be given to us? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. Uh, or just take the screenshot as well. Yeah, move that out of the way. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's move on because I want to make sure the kids have an opportunity to do some practice. Okay. Okay. And we're all listening in, including Goldie. Goldie is learning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this is the rubric. We just wanted to show this to you guys really quick before you start your writing so that you can keep, um, keep it in mind. So you guys want to just screenshot this really quick or um, write down the criteria and what it takes really to get um, a three. Just jot down some bullet points. You can just go ahead and do that really quickly before we get into the writing. Yeah. If you could lower it a little bit just so the word Hunter essay grading rubric shows up. Okay. I just don't want to Perfect. Off. Okay. Yeah. So basically just to talk through this rubric really quickly, the main like points that we grade on are grammar and spelling and punctuation, vocabulary and organization. And then there's one point for addressing the prompt. So just, you know, staying on topic. But um really important that you proofread a lot of mistakes that we see on essays that we're grading are just like silly mistakes because people are rushing and they you know don't go back and proofread because you would totally catch them if you reread you know what you wrote and vocabulary we work a lot on vocabulary in class um you guys get a vocab book and you go through vocab words every week because it's just really important to use not only like advanced vocabulary words but just of you know, a wide variety of language. You don't want to keep using the same words over and over again. You want to make sure that you're throwing in synonyms and, you know, different things like that. And then organization of ideas is basically the structure that we just went through with you. The introduction with the hook, the thesis and the roadmap, the body paragraphs with the topic sentences, the supporting details and the conclusion, and then the conclusion that's just a summary of your ideas. So, Okay. Are there any questions in the chat? Oh, you can't, we see, can't the see the bottom. Here, let's just scroll up so you guys can get the bottom of it. Yeah. Oh, there's another chat. Okay. okay. Great. So do you want to give the prompt? Okay. So we're gonna move on and we're gonna show you guys the prompt that we're gonna work with today, okay? Um, where is it? Okay, here is the prompt. Can you post the link of this PDF? Um, oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll coordinate things after this meeting. Okay, okay. all right. Okay, wait, we're gonna everyone, go. everyone, this is a real released essay prompt, okay? So this is, used one okay yeah all right go ahead okay wait someone's asking for us to go back to the um rubric really quickly so we're just gonna do that for like a minute okay yeah, then we have to move on because we need to have time to yeah and also time for questions yeah. at the end yeah, and yeah. stuff like that and if you guys need us and to everyone this is just an overview because we're running classes yeah right. okay so give us a minute to do this and then we're gonna move on Lawrence, while they're looking at it, can you tell them how many essays numerically you think you've graded over the years? I literally- One, seven, 800. 10,000, <laughs> like who knows? <laughs> I'm grading essays all the time. If you come to Queller, I'll probably grade some of your essays. Actually, I, I definitely- We're, we're in the thousands, guys. Here. Yeah. Thousands. <laughs> mm. How hard were your college writing classes after going to Hunter? Oh, a breeze. 
yeah literally a breeze it's so it's so simple Mm -hmm. at hunter elementary they actually stress a lot of essay writing like i think we were writing five paragraph essays in like second grade yeah because it's a humanity school yeah so once you get those foundations like structure everyone did you hear that it's yeah. so important. Structure helps you so much because yeah, it's so true. easy. Once you have an idea, if you have the structure in your head, it's so easy to organize it really quickly and just jot down an essay, you know? Yeah, I actually think in eighth grade, I think his name was Mr. Roundy. Mr. Roundy. Mm-hmm. He was my English teacher and he was so amazing. I actually think that, that my eighth grade English class was harder than my university writing class at <laughs> gw yeah like for sure that like it taught me your eighth taught- grade class yeah my hunter. writing class he was such a harder teacher and so much harder like on our writing yeah. than my freshman college like university writing class yeah. for sure especially in yeah, seventh and eighth grade because they go over again like essay structure and everything like that they're mm-hmm. super like your writing class your english classes are super intense and some of the teachers that teach Mm -hmm. seventh and eighth grade are like they take it take it really seriously yeah it's really serious you learn a lot because what you learn in that class like you're gonna use in like all of your classes like you have to write essays Mm -hmm. like in class essays homework essays for like every class that you take so it's really important that you guys yeah get this now this is good good information yeah okay so we're gonna move on back to the prompt right here. Okay, so this prompt says, think about a time you learned something from a book that you were able to apply to your life outside of school. Then write an essay or a real life story in which you describe your experience learning that specific important idea from a book and how you apply that idea to your own life. Make sure to use vivid language and detail throughout your essay or real life story and to include why this idea was important. Okay, so when you're writing your essay on the test, you want to take about an hour to plan and write your essay. Okay, so what we usually say is take like five to 10 minutes to write a little brief outline. You get like half a page of just like workspace that, you know, isn't included in the two pages that you hand in. So in that little space, we tell people that you should outline your essay. This person said, does it need to be a true story? No, it does not need to be a true story, but it needs to be a believable story, okay? They're not going to fact check anything about your life. You just want to make sure that it's, you know, something that sounds real. So we're going to take a couple minutes right now to start outlining an essay. Okay. So remember, you want to outline your introduction. You don't have to literally write your hook, but you want to think about the detail or sensory detail type of language that you want to use in your hook. Okay. Your hook is really important. Uh, no neither one of us went to Anderson neither one of us went to Anderson um and then your body paragraphs you want to start with your topic sentence the idea of your body paragraph jot down two to three you know supporting evidence pieces that you want to use in your body paragraph and then your conclusion you don't really need to outline that because your conclusion is literally just a summary of what you wrote in your body paragraphs okay so what time is it It's 534 right now. Let's take until about 540, maybe, to start writing out our essays. I mean, writing out our outlines, okay? Francis is going to coordinate, you know, sending out the link to everyone at the end of this. Yeah, um, I think, I think just for, just for time's sake, is it okay if we just maybe we'll pick on a few kids? Just I think it might be a little bit better because I don't want to lose too many minutes on it. Is that okay? Just yeah. to like shorten a little bit of drafting time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and everyone, we we're gonna have a we're gonna have a long summer program. I just I just want to be really mindful with time right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I I don't know. Does anyone want to volunteer? I could volunteer them. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start with Anya. Hi, Anya. Boo. Anya, okay, go ahead. Can you, how, how do you think you would draft this essay? Um, well, I would first pick a book 
like the, to write about and then like kind of like good can you think them. go ahead go ahead piper take, mm -hmm. go ahead see i'll pick i'll pick on them okay <laughs> well do you have a book in mind maybe like your a, your favorite book not yet but i'm mm -hmm. i have a few but i'm not sure which one to choose out of them but okay does anyone have a book that, that can you guys, why don't you type it you guys can type it into the chat box Wait, yeah. yeah. I think I might do a book called Esperanza Rising. Okay. I read that book. I know that book. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, wait. These are really good um things that you guys are typing in the chat of Mice yeah. of Men. Lord of the Flies is a great book. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you guys can put the the idea from the book that they would be applying. Yeah. So now that you guys have a book that you want to talk about, maybe think about a specific moment or, you know, an idea that you learned from the book that you want to talk about, okay? What are we talking about, Q? Here. In the chat right now, we're talking about books that we would use for this prompt. But let's think about the specific idea from the book that we want to talk about. You have a question. What's your question? Would we need to, would we need to name the book um, that we're taking the idea from? Yes. Yes. So in why isn't this? Oh. Yeah. Um, in this type of essay, if they're asking about an idea from a specific book or a movie or something like that, you always have to introduce the book first. Okay. Um, if you just start talking about a moment or a character, your reader is going to be super confused because they're not going to know, you know, any of the context of what you're talking about. Yeah, we have one right here of mice and men. Oh, it's going so fast. Societies have a difficult time adapting to the needs of specific individuals, putting those people at a disadvantage. Okay. So who is this? Owen. Mm -hmm. This idea that you have, it's a great idea. And now how did you, how would you apply that to your life? Like, what did that teach you? Is it, oh, yeah, what did that teach you, like, personally? Um, well, I want to be a civil rights activist um, and use law to improve civil rights. So if um, societies have a harder time adapting um, to the needs of specific individuals, then I want to use the power of law to help um, make society more inclusive for everyone. Um, and I think that like uh, Of Mice and Men is a book uh, primarily about context um, and the way America was in that time. And if you're able to make the country a better place, then you can gr um, greatly improve the lives of those individuals who are put at a disadvantage. Yeah, that's an awesome idea. Yeah. And that'd be a great essay. You have a lot to talk about. You know, there's a lot of specific details, you know, supporting details that you could use for your body paragraphs. Um, let's see. Oh, there's some other ideas. I, I would make up a book and have it about my talents. Okay, so on the Hunter essay, you can, you know, fib about little personal life stories, but you don't want to make up a whole book, okay? You want to definitely use a book that has been published, you know, into the real world. Embrace life. That's nice. Yeah, Zadie, that's an awesome idea. Totally awesome. You could totally throw in a little personal anecdote, you know, maybe about a time that you really learned to savor, you know, life as it comes at you. Julia, to always persevere and never look at a book from its cover. Yeah. Okay. These are all really great ideas, you guys. Yeah. Iris. Everyone is equal, no matter their social class, race, knowledge, or personality. These are all, these are honestly yeah, all, these really are all ideas. great prompts. Like, you guys could totally write definitely more than two pages on this, mm -hmm. but we only mm -hmm. have two, two pages. pages. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay. So now that you guys have some good ideas, maybe we could start drafting an introduction. Okay. Mm -hmm. So unlike the body paragraph, the introduction is really, really structured out for you guys. Like for the body paragraph, you have to come up with your own supporting details. In the introduction, everything is structured out for you. So you need your hook. Remember, that should be your first sentence or two. Your thesis, which is basically just your answer to the prompt. And then your roadmap, which would be, you know, the general topics of your body paragraphs, what you want to talk about specifically in your essay. So what time is it? Do you want to give them... Oh, it's 41. Yeah. So do you want to give them five to 10 minutes to write their introductions? Yeah. And then, and then you guys can volunteer. We can take on people to read um, what they wrote and then we can provide a few, uh, some yeah. feedback. On Maybe a couple like of people. Or you want them to type it? Type, let, why don't they type it into the chat, maybe? Yeah. Again, I just want to be really mindful with the time. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. So just write your introductions, copy and paste it um, into the chat, just write it directly into the chat, and we can read them and give you guys the feedback. Yeah. We can probably get through more people that way. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Remember, you guys, your introduction should be about five sentences, okay? And also, if you guys have any questions about, you know, the essay, essay structure, or anything like that in general, you can just, you can just ask us. We can't see everybody, so we can't see when your hands are raised, so if you want to oh. just unmute yourself. Okay, so there's some people that just joined. Yes, Brian, right now we're going to write our introductions and put them in the chat, and we're going to give you guys some feedback. The prompt is still up here so you guys can um, refer to that when you're writing your introductions. There's some people that just joined and they want to know what's happening. So we went through um, the structure of the essay and gave um, you guys some tips. Um, at the end, we can go back so that the people that just joined can, con can just screenshot those um, pages that we showed before um, so that they have them. But right now, we here is the essay prompt and we're just writing introduction um, for, for this for this essay prompt. And if you have any questions, if you just join, just put them in the chat. Oh. We're, we're going over the Hunter essay right now. That's what we're doing. So Brian says, I don't know what to write about. So Brian, do you have a favorite book or something? A book that you've read? Um, you don't know? Okay. Um, what? If you have small handwriting, should you make it bigger? Um, I mean, if you don't think that you're going to fill up the two pages, I guess you can make it a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. But you should really just try and, you know, fill it up with detail support. You know, with a prompt like this, something from a, you know, when you have to introduce a book, you have to give a little bit of context about the book. Okay, and like the situations from the book that you're explaining so that your reader can follow along. So that might take up some space too. So I wouldn't start making my handwriting bigger. But I would just try and fill up the space. Yeah, but if also if your handwriting is super tiny to the point where someone else may not be able to really read it, yeah. make sure that it's legible. So if, if you need to make your handwriting a little bigger to make sure that the, the person reading your essay can read your essay, yeah. then, then you should do that. Yeah. Spatial awareness is really important. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, your, your handwriting should definitely be large enough to read. So if you need to go ahead and make it your handwriting a little bit bigger. Yeah. And also sure take the time to write hand. neatly, you guys. Mm -hmm. Can Don't I type it? it? Yeah, type it into the chat for right now. But when you're actually taking the test, it's going to be handwritten. Um, and when you're doing your homework essays, they should be handwritten too, you know, if you take the class. Make sure that you write neatly, okay? No, you have to write the intro yeah, right now. Just the intro. We're just yeah. doing the intro right now. <laughs> Maybe... <laughs> Write a little slower. <laughs> yeah. 
maybe practice a little bit. Future <laughs> doctor. <laughs> totally true. Yeah, maybe practice a little bit. Um, make sure your handwriting is just legible. legible. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just can, you can make sure that your handwriting is legible. Mm-hmm. How will we qualify for the exam? Um, so Frances is talking about this a little bit earlier. She said that she thinks that they're going to use fourth use fourth grade um, exams. I'm not really sure. I don't think that they've come out with a statement about how they're doing it this year, but usually it's fifth grade state exams. Um, yeah. I'm in fourth grade and we have the state test this year, so how will we be graded based on our tests? Well, the we didn't have the state test this year. Yeah, I, I can help answer that right now. So the last conversation was that Hunter's considering looking at the fourth grade state tests. So that's the most recent benchmark. Um, they're going to release. Yeah, but I mean, for um, you're not necessarily affected. So you're, you're getting a nice head start right now. For students this particular year, they'll be affected by the change. So when it comes to those specific fifth graders, um, keep in mind that the actual, they're likely gonna look at fourth grade scores. But again, that's gonna be announced and finalized. We're gonna know probably late, mid to late September, the exact benchmark and cutoff. It, I mean, we're definitely gonna send out an email as soon as we get definitive information. Yeah. And just to clarify, you take the Hunter exam in sixth grade. So if you're in fourth grade right now, you have some time before you're taking it. So usually what happens is you take it in sixth grade and then they would use the exams from fifth grade, so the year before. But if you're in fourth grade right now, I mean, I don't really know if they're going back. I don't know how what they're going to do next year with state exams, but let's say that you're in school, you do the state exams, they would use those fifth grade state exams to qualify you for the Hunter test. Brian, what do you mean if you don't know? Oh, what, you've, what you don't know, if you, what you've learned from the book? Um, if, if you're not sure what you've, what you've learned from yeah. so then, the, for the book, then maybe, maybe try to find a different book that you have learned um, something from. One more thing, we had some questions up here. For Sunny and for Sierra, yeah. Um, yes. I never really thought about it, you know? Yeah. Okay, so wait, really quickly. You should include the name and the author of the book in your, I mean, in your essay. Definitely do that. Now, back to Brian. So this whole essay prompt is asking about something that you've learned from a book, right? So you need to come up with some kind of lesson that you've learned from a book. Um, Usually you take, you know, five to 10 minutes to think and plan about what you want to write. But right now, because we're cramped on time, we're just trying to get it going so that we can give you guys some, you know, feedback. Mm. Okay, so if you guys, if anyone has finished their paragraph, can you, cop can you put it into the chat so that we can start giving feedback so we can give as many people feedback um, as possible? And if you haven't finished it yet, that's fine. Just finish up. Um, but for the people that have finished, can you just go ahead and put your paragraph in the chat so we can start giving you guys feedback? Yeah. Okay, you got one. Oh, we got a couple. Oh, okay. So, when I was younger, I would never embrace excitement. Great hook. Um, when something was thrilling, I was always apprehensive about when it ended. After I read Umbrella Summer, I realized that life was fast, that it would be over, but you need to enjoy the moments as they come. Over the course of the next few paragraphs, I will explain how reading Umbrella Summer by Lisa Graff changed my outlook on life. Okay, great. Something to work on is your roadmap. So you just generally say over the course of the next few paragraphs, I will explain how reading this book changed my outlook on life. But remember, in your roadmap, you want to give the topics of your body paragraphs, but just generally, okay? So I haven't read this book, so I'm not exactly sure what happens in it, but I'm just going to come up with stuff, so bear with me. So let's say, um, you know, you learned from some character that, you know, um, life is short, 
And then you also learned that, I don't know, what else? Um, <laughs> I don't know, but I'm trying to come up with like ideas, but it's difficult because I haven't read this book. This is a great intro, but you just need to make sure that your roadmap is specific to what you're going to talk about in your body paragraphs. Basically, don't just generally say that you're going to yeah. explain, you know, whatever. Okay. Thank you. But other than that, this is a this is a good start. You want to make it a little bit longer, but in class you would talk about how to, you know, use flowery language and things to, you know, elongate your paragraphs. But this is a great start. Okay. Let's keep going. The book I would pick is Forever or a Long Long Time by Kayla Carter. This book is about a foster child that has been moved around from house to house all her life. This experience makes her very insecure. When she finally finds a home, her new mother tells her that she will never have to leave this home again. As the girl is very insecure, this makes her doubt that she will be able to stay. Okay. Okay. So, so, in, so like we mentioned before, you need a hook. So like in the last paragraph that we read, she said, when I was younger, I would never embrace excitement. That excitement, that kind of draws you in. So there isn't a hook in this paragraph that we just read. So you need a hook for one, mm -hmm. two. Um, I don't think you really mentioned what you, what the book taught you. You kind of just summarized the book. So you also, you need to, you need to say yeah. what it talked taught you. And then you also need to roadmap and outline what you're going to talk about in the following body paragraphs. Yeah. You but, guys mm -hmm. oh, remember, don't get lost in explaining the book to your reader because that's not the point of the essay. The point right. of the essay yeah. is talking about the lesson that you learn. Yes, throughout your body paragraphs, you might have to give some context to certain situations mm -hmm. that you mentioned in the book, but primarily your essay should be about the lesson that you learned, yeah. okay? So don't, don't use your introduction as a summary of the, of the, of the book. Okay. Oh. How do I make a very good hook? Okay, quickly, so a hook, Something that's really easy to do is start using sensory details. So that's your five senses, okay? Taste, smell, hearing, touch, things like that, okay? Um, also, you could start with just an interesting detail, okay? Um, hooks are, you know, there's not one way to make a good hook. They're really diverse but you just want to start with something that's engaging, okay? Something that's going to grab the reader's attention. Okay. Um, what time is it? We'll do a couple more. Mm -hmm. Sometimes family members do not always agree. Maybe they even argue sometimes, but that is the nature of family. In the book, The Golden Compass, the book teaches me the idea that family beliefs are not always harmonious. In the book, Lyra and her father, Azriel, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but she did not even know that he was her father until late in the book, had a lot of disagreements throughout the book. And even her mother, Miss Coulter, imprisoned him in a dungeon until Lyra saved him with her golden compass, or Alice Meoder? That was wrong. <laughs> but going on, as the book says. The book reminds me about my family, although the book kind of takes the disagreements to the extreme, the fact that we don't always agree. Okay, Lisa, so I understand your thesis. I understand the lesson that it taught you, but this introduction is a little wordy. Um, so you want to make sure that your parts of your intro are clear, okay? I think, again, you're kind of getting caught up in explaining the book rather than explaining the lesson that you learned. I know it's really difficult to try and break that up, but remember, the most important part is the lesson that you learn, not the context of the book. If you have to give context in your essay, it will probably come in your body paragraphs, not in your introduction, okay? So I think with this, your hook, you know, I see you working on it. It's not just a, you know, bland statement, but I think that it could be a little more engaging. Um, and then once you start, you know, talking about what happens in the book, I think that you could cut that down and then, 
you know, include a roadmap at the end. Your roadmap is super important, you guys, because it helps the reader organize what's going to happen in the essay. In your head, when you're writing the essay, obviously you know exactly what you want to say. The reader is not in your head. So a roadmap makes it really easy for your reader to organize your thoughts as well. So always include that. Okay. I think turn left on the essay. Come. Do like two more maybe? Yeah. This one and the following one. Okay. Um, as I walk into the humid room, I spot this gleaming light on the table. That's a really good hook. Yeah. Really good hook, you guys. I walk over and found the book called Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows by J.K. Rowling. I flipped the book and start reading, and the time and time flew, and I felt like I was in it. I remember when Neville kills a snake, but in the beginning of the series, he was scared. This changed me by making me go out of my comfort zone and made me take risks. Okay. So I understand your lesson. You're trying to say that this book taught you how to take risks and go out of your comfort zone. But the middle of your introduction is a little unclear, okay? Um, again, you need to make sure that you include a roadmap. Very important. Your roadmap should always be the last sentence or two of your introduction, okay? But um, I don't know how... Neville, is Neville killing the snake the key moment of the book that you want to focus on? I'm not sure. It just sounds kind of like you're just mentioning a moment in the book. Not really. Um, it's kind of important, but not that important. Okay. So then if that's just a supporting detail that you'd want to use in your body paragraph, you don't really need to include it in your introduction, okay? Um, your introduction doesn't really need any like specific moments from the book unless there is just literally one specific moment from the book that you're going to talk about for the entire essay like if there are multiple moments then you just don't need to include specifics in your essay um but again really good hook great job starting just make sure that you include a um, roadmap and make sure that you're not putting in any like extra information that you don't need. Okay, we're gonna do one more, you guys. Should I do this one? Sure. Okay. Have you been judged by the way you look? In the book Wonder by RJ Palacio, August was judged by the way he looks instead of the qualities he shows. He is very bright, but he was weighed down by bullies. This has shown me that you shouldn't judge someone by what they look like, but rather the actions that they make. Okay, first things first, I know it's so tempting to use a question as a hook, but you shouldn't use questions in formal writing, okay? So maybe come up with a different hook, a different detail from the story, maybe. Um, okay, then you go into this. That's a... Spell exhilarated. What did you say? Can you spell exhilarated? Don't worry about that right now. <laughs> Let me just finish going through this introduction, okay? Um, Okay, yeah, and then you give a brief context of the book, you guys. This is a great way of giving a brief general summary of the book. He says, um, August, the main character, was judged by the way he looks instead of the qualities he shows. Okay, that's an important part of the book that he wants to highlight. It's also very brief. He's not giving a whole, you know, situation that comes up in the book. He's just giving general context. Then your lesson. This has shown me that you shouldn't judge someone by what they look like, but rather the actions that they make. Again, just don't use contractions. They're informal. This is a formal essay. Um, but this is a good thesis, very to the point. You just want to make sure that you're including a roadmap. Right. You guys, roadmaps are super important, okay? I know that they might seem like something just, you know, simple and not that necessary, but it's really, really important. Okay, what time is it? Six o'clock on the dot. Okay, wow. <laughs> so punctual. Okay, so we don't need to go.
intros. So yeah, so we'll tie everything together. Guys, yeah. I hope that you guys got some good well. from this. Um, structure is the foundation of all essays. Like not just the Hunter essay, but essays that you're going to write in school, essay that you're going to write in college, okay? Structure is really important. Once you get this foundational information, writing essays is going to be so much easier. And all of the language and grammar and things like that, you know, you just work on that. That comes with writing essays and reading books. You'll get that. But this structure is something that you really want to make sure that you have in your notes. Um, can I see the structure again? Yes. yes. We will scroll up again <laughs> to the structure. You guys can take some more time to write that down. If you guys have any more questions, we'll stay on for a few minutes and, and answer them. Yeah. No problem, you guys. Welcome. So much fun. <laughs> it does uh, want to remind you, we're running the summer classes also at Queller. We have a writing only class if you wanted to just do that. We have a summer class full time, Monday to Thursday, or you could just do the writing. If you want to do the Monday to Thursday, we have it in person or online. You can decide exactly, you know, which route you want to go, but we're very well equipped to do both. Yeah. yeah. Welcome guys. Thank you everyone. What exactly is a roadmap? So um, again, a roadmap, it's really simply just what the topics of your body paragraph are going to be. So I think right now a lot of people just didn't have enough time maybe to think about what they were going to put in their body paragraphs. Um, but on an actual essay or on a homework essay, obviously you take a couple minutes to plan out what you want to talk about. So let's say um, like the prompt is asking you about your favorite animal, okay? And I say that my favorite animal is a lion. My roadmap, this is in very simple English, <laughs> you should try and, you know, make it a little bit fancier. But I could say like my favorite animal is a lion because they're majestic, they're courageous, and they teach me how to be brave. And then I would have three body paragraphs, one body paragraph talking about how they're majestic, one body paragraph talking about how they're brave, and then another body paragraph talking about um, how they taught me to be brave, basically. Yeah. Someone asked, when do summer classes start? Um, I think the weekend classes start on the 27th and the weekday classes start on the 29th. Okay. Any other questions, guys, before we log off? Okay, is that it? Do, do you guys want to see any of the, like, the tips we... pages? Should we show that again? Let me, I'll just, I'll just show yeah. it just in case. Oh wait, it was up here, right? Yeah. Can you sign up if you're in fourth grade going to fifth grade? Um, Francis. <laughs> Are you, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what is it, Lauren? Tell me. If someone's asking if they're in the fourth grade going into the fifth grade, can they sign up for classes? Yes, right? Yeah, they could, they could, it's just not, it's not common, but yeah, that's, that's fine. And then Lawrence, Dash, Lawrence, Dasha, Piper, we're, it's, it's a family of tutors teaching the summer classes. Um, but I know Dasha's on schedule and then Lawrence, I'm assuming that's a yes. That was a not. Okay. Looks like a yes to me. Okay. Piper, that looks like a yes to you. Isn't it so cool? We have two sisters. If you want us to Twins. We're not yeah, we're twins. Not twins. <laughs> <laughs> She's got like two years yeah. on me. She's a little older. It's because we're both wearing glasses and probably. we have our hair tied back. That's probably what it is. <laughs> and we're both matching <laughs> in the yeah. shirt. Who, want, who wants to see Goldie? If you type Goldie in the chat box, I'll get her as we're winding down. Who wants to see Goldie? Goldie, 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 Goldie. 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 <laughs> So many Goldies. Yeah, Goldie's like an honorary tutor at Queller. 
Goldie in all caps. Yeah. <laughs> I really yeah, want to see Goldie. Goldie. What college did you go to? Ooh. I, I I go to GW, the George Sorry. Washington University in DC. And mm -hmm. I go to Macaulay Honors at Hunter. But we're still in college. We haven't yeah. graduated yet. She and finishes in May. I finish in the fall. I'm actually spotlighting the dog there. <laughs> <laughs> this dog needs a haircut. Look at this. Look at this. We can't even see anything. Look at that. Maybe a hairstyle. <laughs> Hi, Goldie. We love the children. Okay. The same teacher uh, every yeah, day. Yeah, we're going to have yeah. the same instructor every day. Wait, I can bring my dog. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, doggy reunion. Let's do it. Was that Brian? Who said that? No, it's like Goldie. What is doggy reunion. Well, we love I can't read it now. As we have another webinar today about the girl who got into medical school. She's going to Sophie Davis. That's today at seven. Do you guys like the webinars? We're, we're emailing you a bunch of them. Hello. You ready? She's going to dance. Hello, goatee. Doggy <laughs> <laughs> reunion. Um, there were all. Wait, let me, wait, who is it? Who is it? I don't see who it is. Me. Isis? Susan? Yeah. Oh, oh. Isis, hold on. Wait, I want to see. Hold on. Oh, oh, so cute. Hold on. Show me Goldie. I want to see the doggy. 14. Oh my gosh, we have another dog. Oh, this is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Oh. Do you think they know each I mean, other? We, 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 we care about the Hunter essay too, but. Oh my God, doggy <laughs> reunion. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so cute. I wish I had Wait, have you, did you have a secret dog grooming? Your dog is awfully well put together. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me the secrets. Oh my God, it looks so cute. <laughs> that's it so we're good and Lawrence Piper thank you so much for doing this everyone give them a big thank you nope. um that they are doing such a good job and and they're and it, we had girl power today so we had two sisters who both go to Hunter isn't that so nice and they um gave us the review thank you so much we're gonna send this over okay I wish I had a dog everyone let's go off mute let's say thank you okay you can you can un I think you can unmute yourselves, right? I think so. I don't know. I hope so. Yeah. Could, could yeah. they? I can unmute Good. myself. Thank you. Okay, everybody, let's say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Really we're so happy me. that you got to help us. I love the blue. It goes well with you. See? We're good. We all match. I gotta get I gotta get My Goldie dog used to have a blue collar, but then he lost it. She does. No, she does have a blue collar. I'll show you. Hold on. No, my dog used to have a blue collar and then he lost oh, it. Oh, I see. Yeah. He doesn't wear a collar anymore. Goldie! Three. She has a blue collar. Goldie, who's there? Bye. Thank Bye. you guys. Bye. Thanks for participating. Bye. This summer. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Can we leave now? That's yeah. it. We're good. Thank Bye. you, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Goldie's like, what is this? Is there food here? <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. So, Lawrence, I'm going to end the meeting, okay? All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right. Um, okay. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you for participating. Yes. Um, and that's it. I'm going to hit end meeting, okay? Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.